Hello everyone and welcome to episode 149 of the TW 2020 New Japan Pro Wrestling Series here on the channel. Well today, it is not a New Japan sanctioned event, oh no. It is a Sonata Wrestling production and it is presenting the rightful champion is crowned. As for tonight, it has been booked by the man that he is appointed as the new president, uh, you know, per the New Japan Ultimate Warfare matchup, him winning. He gets this show. You know, he's picked out the the ring mat. He's picked out the apron, the buckles, everything, the fucking stage. Everything has been custom made for this event. What could be? The birth of something uh, completely different could be uh, a one-time deal. Who really knows? As far as uh, it really comes down to that main event, which uh, in the card itself, you know, the card has been made by the president. It's uh, as far as the rules. It's uh, it has been understood that the, the referee's discretion is really, really loose as far as uh, they are letting the talent get after it. Rules, uh, I wouldn't say they are uh, meant to be broken tonight, but goddamn, uh, they <laughs> they have a really good chance of being broken, and it's uh, it's going to be quite the show. It, it's, again, one show, not a, no row two shows or anything like that, but there is... A lot hanging in the balance, for sure. And with this uh, struggle within New Japan, in this, I would say, almost uh, poisonous group that is uh, the super group of destruction, if you will. Still no official name for them. It is still just the signs of perfection with the... Kingdom of Torture, and Peace, Love, and War. But my God, they have a chance for something special here tonight. As our main event, again, special guest referee will be the new president as Sonata challenges Tyler Black for the IWGP Heavyweight title. That one, I would dare say every non-member of the, those groups, you love know, the Science of Perfection, Peace, Love, and War, and Kingdom of Torture. They're playing against a stacked deck. For sure. Because I'm sure these referees are not wanting to uh, disqualify or even uh, stop in the way of a lot of that talent. Because they know the repercussions are going to be quite fierce. They might get beat up for it. They might get even worse. They might even get fired. Who knows? But this new president... He might be ruling with an iron fist. It's uh, it, it is a whole new regime, and this might just be a, a small taste, or it could be the change for the future. Who knows? But as far as for uh, the card, you know, again, we talked about the heavyweight title matchup already, but the IWGP Tag Team titles are also on the line, and we're gonna see Jay White and Drew Robinson team up to take on the Gory Bastards. Of John Mox and Pac. Can this uh, duo of terror in uh, Jay White and Juice Robinson get the win over the Gory Bastards? Or they keep their IWGP Tag Team title rank going? Of course, we saw the two singles matches between them. As far as, uh, you know, we saw Moxley and Juice, the Intercontinental title matchup, and Jay White and Pac for the U.S. title. Now we see the tag team title matchup between those four men. As the New Japan... Or actually, I don't know why I said New Japan. It should be IWGP. Here we go. IWGP. Women's title matchup. Mark Ito of Peace, Love, and War gets the title matchup against Mayu Iwatani. Of course, representing Peace, Love, and War. And this is definitely a, a gift for sure. For Peace, Love, and War for Maki Ito. But she's got a chance to shock the world. And to beat Mayu Yutani for the women's title. 
that would be something <laughs> to have uh, Maki Ito as our women's champ. New Japan Strong Openweight Tag Team Title Matchup as the Junior Everweight Tag Team Champions. The Velocities taking on Hiromu Takahashi and Ryu Lee. This is, uh, I mean, Velocities have a chance. Obviously, the next month is Power Struggle, so they'll have a Junior Everweight Tag League to go through. But they have a chance to walk into that Tag League double champs if they can beat Hiromu Takahashi and Ryu Lee. Would be a major, major win. That should be a hell of a matchup, though. That might even be better than the goddamn IWGP Tag Team title matchup. We'll have to wait and see. Of course, Junior Everweight title matchup, the newest member. Former House of Black member now. Of course, part of Designs of Perfection, Robbie Eagles. Taking on Cody Amato for the Junior Everweight title, who's looking to make his first defense after beating Lee Moriarty for the Junior Everweight title. Major, major matchup there. Can Robbie Eagles be the Junior Everweight champion? He's had title matches before. This might be the chance he needs to get that Junior Boy title in a uh, special little tag team matchup. As uh, if we have just a fucking hoss fest here. Hey, out of tomorrow, Will Hobbs teaming up to take on Brody King and Caveman Oog. As uh, far as the kind of mega force of some of the biggest men a part of that evil group. With Brody King and Caveman Oog teaming up. But they're taking on, you know, maybe the uh, the mega powers, if you will, with, uh, you know, as far as Tamora and Will Hobbs, guys that have went to battle, for sure. Uh, but as far as now teaming up for the first time, and that's going to be a hell of a match. House of Black versus the Science of Perfection. This will be a, I want to say it's an eight-man tag. I could be wrong. But as far as, or no, is this, wait a minute, two, four, six, oh no, this is, it, I'm an idiot, this shouldn't be there, there we go, <laughs> I was about to say, wait a minute, yeah, that was just from the previous tour, D, yeah, so, I, don't, I don't know what's going on with my keyboard, but it feels like it's, the batteries might be dying or something, it's delaying a lot of activity, but uh, Clark Connors and Logan McQueen, another kind of idea of having Somebody from Peace, Love, and War. Somebody from Designers of Perfection teaming up. Taking on Katsuhika Nakajima and, K and uh, Kato Crusher. A little bit of a prelude before the uh, Designers of Perfection uh, Diamond K Junior Boy title matchup there. This will be the Tactical Masterclass matchup. We'll kick off the show. I mean, for a, a one-time event, not a bad card. Not a bad card at all. Five title matches. This has a lot riding on the line. For sure. Or no, no, I had it right the, the first time here. Oh, I know what I'm missing. That's, hold on. <laughs> I know what it is. As, uh, yeah, I don't know why. As, uh, I'm trying to think where I'm going to put this, actually. Now that I'm, uh, thinking about it. I usually think it's going to be the first title matchup. It's actually going to be six title matches on the card. Oh my god. The keyboard is failing me. Horrendously. Jesus. Christ. Well, we'll just... I'll, I'll just say it. <laughs> it's the fucking keyboard. It's being a piece of shit. Uh, never open weight. Six man tag team title matchup. As we will be seeing, of course, the champs. Lee Moriarty, Volter, Zack Stibber Jr. take on... The team of Designers of Perfection, it will be Tomoya Tom Ford, Showtime Tanaka, Baroni Yamamura. That will be uh, the sixth title match. So yeah, six title matches on the line. The trios match. Tag team title matchups. And of course, the major main event, a major women's title matchup as well. And even the major junior boy title matchup as well, uh, you know, I'm excited to see a lot of these matches. A lot of fresh matches, too. You know, as far as Makito, Mayu, Mayu Itana, of course, very fresh match up there. The two undercard matches are you know, matches for the first time. The Velocities and Hiromu and Ryu Lee match. I mean, that's going to be insane. Should be a banger. As uh, we will now jump to it. Alrighty, so the opening contest, 58. Tough break here. Uh, as far as, yeah, the fans hated the ending. Wanted to have um, Leona Fujinami, or Leona Fujinami, Jesus Christ, Bernie Amor and Logan McQueen 
uh, get a, a heel win, like a cheating, you know, tactic as far as getting a handful of tights. They beat Kato Crusher and Katsuka Nakajima. As far as, uh, it, it could have been a probably decent little opener without that finish. But we're really setting the tone with what type of time we're on with this win. As, uh, so, we get a win for these the uh, Designs of Perfection already tonight off of some bullshit. In the next matchup, we just see eventually Brody King and Caveman Oak and, you know, Will Hobbs and Adam Tamora. It eventually just breaks down. They can't control him as far as Davey. The referee can't, can't control him. Eventually, Brody King gets a chair. And it's just, you know, now Davey's like, oh, God, do I call the DQ? Do I not call it? And he whacks Adam Tamora with the chair. And he, he looks up, you know, he, he, really Brody King's now intimidating him as far as with the chair, like threatening him with just like, hey, you know, you better not call this or you're fucking next. And he just keeps on hitting him with the chair. He ends up even trying to pulmonize him. But he does it around the neck and not the, the ankle as far as setting up the chair head uh, on the, uh, on the you know, basically covering the neck area. And uh, before he jumps off, Davey calls for it, gets DQ'd, and immediately, you know, and as Hobbs is, Hobbs and Caveman Oak, they're not in the ring, so we don't see them, but once the bell rings, Oog immediately comes back in, and is irate, and it's basically, you know, towering in the corner is poor uh, Davey, and he gets fucked up for his troubles, <laughs> so they beat him up, they even, uh, Set him up for like a um, concerto, something where you could easily, you know, the the chair doesn't actually hit him, but it just looks devastating type of thing. And again, another message being sent with, with this match. As far as uh, you better let these guys wrestle, you better not call a DQ or this is your fate. So I love that though. I, I, it's again, this is a different type of show really, um, as far as, it, it is very sports entertainment, more so than, uh, obviously what New Japan is meant for, but it, it's a, uh, it's a whole different philosophy, it's a whole different type of story being told, obviously, um, that, that's a risk anytime you're doing something like that, because you're not trying to upset the audience, Luckily, 100,000 people still showed up for the Antonio Noki Super Arena, but as far as the reception for this type of show, it would be pretty interesting, but I think also to kind of cop out with... I think everyone kind of knew there was going to be some shenanigans coming into this night. And a lot of people probably were just tuning in, maybe to see who's the new president, maybe to see the heavyweight title matchup, just as, or maybe they're just loyal fans, and they're just like, sure, it's not technically a New Japan event, but we want to see... Uh, what's going to happen. So there is also that too. But that, that's just a fun little segment. Not for Davey though. That's a tough, <laughs> tough way to get the shit kicked out of him. As I said. Oh, it's Sageo Tachimana. I was thinking it was Brony Amamor. But yeah, Brony Amamor is in the opener. Duh. As uh, United Empire do in fact get the win. We see uh, Tomoya Tom Ford get choked out with a rear naked choke. And uh, United Empire get the win. They retain, and again, they are just such a tremendous team. And we had just seen, so, you know, bullshit after bullshit finish. It was nice to see, uh, you know, as far as the team get the win and actually beat Designers of Perfection in a uh, straight-up contest. So a big win there for them, and they keep their number 1.6-man tag team titles. Next matchup, Junior Boy title matchup, Cody Yamada and Robbie Eagles. Actually, a good little matchup here. As Yamada gets the win, I was... Thinking that there was interference, but no, I don't think so. Yeah, this is another straight-up match between the two men. Yumeida gets the win. He retains the first time. Obviously, we just put the belt on him. That belt wasn't going anywhere. But, uh, I mean, his little junior heavyweight title run already off to a pretty good start. But then, shockingly, new champs. Double champs. Velocities. Beating Ryu Lee in a run with Takahashi, and it was actually kind of close. As we saw, even though, uh, so first Logan McQueen, as far as, uh, 
you know, as far as takes Hiromu off the uh, apron, you know, as far as it throws him into the barricade and really puts the boots to him, taking him out. So it turns into a two-on-one. But then even comes Robbie Eagles after just having his grueling match with, uh, obviously, Cody Omeda. Maybe we could have him, you know, maybe selling an injury while he's, you know, hitting the pulse uh, four or five, you know, maybe selling his ribs or something after the big hit. Doing anything he can to help his uh, Designs Perfections and Aussie Brethren get the win. Double champ status, though, for the Velocities. Massive, massive victory as a man. I mean, that's a, that's a hell of a win. Hell of a win. And if they can somehow become the IWGP Tag Team Champions next, dear God. I mean, you, you got triple champ status. You lose fucking triple crown in uh, New Japan. That'd be a hell of a resume. Edition for sure. As Mayu Iwatani does in fact beat Maki Ito here with the diving double foot stomp. So we do see uh, as far as um, the um, ladies of uh, uh, ladies of death as far as Raven Creed and Sage Sin try to help their uh, sister for Maki Ito as far as in the same obviously this mega group as uh, you know, Mayu Iwatani does overcome the odds, gets the win. Again, just your simple kind of story of them trying to screw over another champion. As far as from that regard. Uh, but yeah, I mean, as far as fifth defense for her, the uh, the fiery baby face overcomes it all and, and gets the win and retains her belt. But what a world, though, we could have lived in if Makita was the fucking women's champ. So 91 for the co-main event. And yes, new champs. As, uh, my God, it's... Literally, Coughlin and Connors take out Pac. Takes four guys to beat up on. Uh, actually, excuse me, rather. Four guys beat up on Pac on the outside. As then it turns into a 2-on-1. And again, Juice is in the ref's face saying, You better not disqualify this or you don't. You know, you know what's fucking next. Unfortunately for them, they don't work well as a team. So that's not a great title change. But for the sake of the story, I'm all for it. And double champ status for JY2. But, uh, man, they win now the IWGP Tag Team titles. This mega group has all the tag belts. They don't have the Never Open with six-band tag team title belts. Or they don't even have the New Japan Strong Women's tag team title belts. But, man, they got the heavyweight, the junior, and the men's New Japan Strong Openweight tag team titles now. They are adding to the resume. But now we see who is the new president. Pointed by Sonata. And shockingly, it's a man that brought him into New Japan. That's the Naito. My oh my. Why, Naito? <laughs> Why? Yeah, as far as uh, the... I, I don't think a lot of people would have probably saw this coming. I think this was a fun... Because I think a lot of people probably would have assumed it was going to be Mudo. Uh, but I wanted to do a swerve kind of as far as with the idea of Naito seeing the success, seeing what Sonata's done and the change he's doing. It's made him proud. And sure, he's probably thinking, this guy screwed me over in the past, but he did it because he knew that he had an opportunity of a lifetime to lead his own group to do the things that Naito's done. You know, main event, Wrestle Kingdom, go into, uh, you know, the uh, the G1 and winning it. You know, stuff like that. Where he knew that he needed to be on his own path. And he's got, you know, he's got the referee shirt. He is the referee for our main event. However, what a fucking drama-filled encounter this is. So, we see as far as uh, they, they do a straight up match for a hot minute. Uh, but then, as far as uh, Naito tells Sonata, go up to the top rope, you know, get the moonsault. And he you know, hits the moonsault. He says, go up again. Another moonsault. Third time. He's like, go up again. And as he tells him to get up for the third time, 
shoves him off. Sends him to the floor. And uh, then that, and he starts waving in. In comes Shane Strickland and Prince Nada from House of Black. It was a swerve! The double cross! As uh, Tyler Black down, but Naito tries to help him up. But Tyler Black doesn't even know what's going on. He's like, you know, as far as he just sees Naito helping him up, he's thinking that something's going to happen to him. And he kicks him in the dick, sends him flying through the ropes. Oh no, and then he sees what's going on. He's like, what the, how the fuck, you know, did Strickland and Prince Nana come out to help him? Like, he, again, he was on the ground, just ate two moonsaults, you know, and as far as, from that perspective, he, he's looking around like, ah, oh, great, I took out the ref, now what? But from the crowd, the ace, somehow it snuck his way into the building, jumps to the rail, Butts on the goddamn referee shirt from the laid out Naito. And now, as far as for Strickland in Christian Casanova. In, or, yeah, Strickland and Casanova. Strickland and Prince Nana, rather. Throw him back into the ring. Curb stomp. Tanahashi does the count. One, two, three. Referee. He signals for the bell, obviously, in Tanahashi, and, well, timekeeper obeys. I guess he's just like, well, he, he's the ref now. There you go. Still the champion. Tyler Black. Very much, um, as far as an overbooked clusterfuck. But a fun story. I think as far as, uh, and again, the... We needed some logic in this, where Naito didn't obviously tell Tyler Black, hey, I'm on your side. Where Tyler Black just assumes, oh shit, he's gonna do, he's gonna like, hit me with, you know, as far as uh, either Gloria or fucking Destino or anything. Like, this, this is it. The double moonsault into a Destino and then the third moonsault to really, you know, nail in the coffin maybe. But no. Uh, no, it was all a swerve. As uh, Tanahashi then helps out Naito, and, and as far as Tyler Black is, you know, as far as celebrated with Strickland and, and Nana, with uh, now as far as, you know, they, with uh, waking him up as far as Naito, job, you know, job got done, and Naito is, uh, you know, Tyler Black's just kind of like, that's say. Hey, I didn't know whose side you were on type of thing. Just, you know, hold his hands up like, hey, that's that's my bad. It's my bad, you know, tranquilo. <laughs> He's trying to be the uh, the peacemaker here after what just happened. And uh, they, they head up to the back. As that's going on, though, there's a post-show press conference. It's technically not a post-show press conference because it's technically still going as the main event. But they are getting these press conferences going. And one of them we want to talk about is the Velocity's one. For Truth London and Paris State Silva, obviously the new double champs here in New Japan, but also for them, they're hyping up the power struggle of Junior Heavyweight Tag League. And they kind of jokingly go, yeah, sure, we could probably, you know, we've won this before. We could probably tell them to, you know, as far as tell the head chief, the new president, hey, we want to take the, the tour off, we'll just take on the winner. Of whoever wins it. And that's kind of what they're joking about. And saying ah, we probably shouldn't even do. The Junior Heavyweight Tag League. And then the, um, the the reporters. Seeing what's going on. That the turn just happened. As this press conference is going on. They're losing their shit. And they start to leave. And the Velocity's like oh it looks like. Our new champion. And, and the president got the job done. How great. And one of the English speaking. Uh press people, is like, no, man, uh, Naito just turned on Sonata, and uh, Tanashi's the pre or is the ref, and he just counted the pinfall, <laughs> and Tyler Black's still the champion, they're just like, what the fuck, oh god, and immediately, they start just racing towards the, uh, the locker room area to, you know, tell the troops on what's going on, and as uh, now we see Tyler Black and Tetsuya Naito and the rest of the gang 
show up in the backstage area, and they're trying to... Yeah, for Naito, he's got a lot to explain here. For him, as far as it was trying to gain Sonata's trust and make sure that he thinks that he is the one that's the president, as far as the one to be appointed the man in charge. Not Milano Collection AT, not Kaiji Muto, not even himself. You know, as far as that, I guess could have done that. But instead, to pick the man who brought him in. And to say that, uh, you know, again, to talk about him being proud of doing his own thing. Being his own man and leading his own group and doing things that he couldn't even imagine. But he's also, you know, talking about how he was main event in Tokyo Domes. And now he sees Sonata main eventing a, a, a super arena that's holding 100,000 people. He's doing it on a damn near monthly basis and how it's just it's crazy how much new japan has grown and to think that he was wanting to destroy it and he thinks about you know as far as with antonio noki you know this super arena to hold this type of event here just a fucking slap in the face to him you know as far as I, antonio noki would not have loved this at all and he says that this is what sonato has been trying to trying to preach that this type of era this presentation of, of entertainment it's not the future new japan is about strong style it's about the best talent in the world battling one-on-one -on -one, no interference no anything like that that's what it should be about and i coined up the plan it's the mastermind of this plan had tanashi in on it you know, told you know, Tana, as far as he's sure, we might not have seen eye to eye. We've had our battles. But he knew that I could, you know, get the job done to, to sell in a convincing, convincing fashion. I would be the president for one night and get the win. But also not even just the president for one night. I mean, technically, now he's still the president. But as far as what that leads to the rest of them... Well, as Tyler Black, you know, said, hey, man, you know, I'm, I, you know, I was nervous. I'm not going to lie to everybody. I thought tonight was my night to lose this heavyweight title. I was glad that it all worked out. But in comes the Juice Robinsons, the Coughlins, the Connors, Jay White, Brody King, Shinsuke, Devitt. And, uh, you know, Tamora Tom Ford, Showtime Tanaka. I mean, just a beatdown on to, you know, Tyler Black, Anana, and uh, to Shane Strickland. Oh, of course, Tyler Black. Um, they're getting laid out in the back, in, you know, the press area. And Naito is now face to face with Sonata. And as Sonata is, you know, walking towards him, trying to get a hold of him. Will Hobbs from behind. Naito doesn't see him. Backs into Hobbs. Oh shit. Turns around. It's like, oh, okay. You know, he kind of tries to point to him. They're like, yeah, go get him. But Hobbs just <laughs> in a cheesy kind of 80s movie, 80s movie, just shakes his head now. Picks him up, slams him down through the table. God damn, you know, it's just a uh, spine buster through the table. Naito takes it crazy, you know, as far as all the shit that's on the table, uh, you know, as far as maybe it's uh, water bottles and fucking shit like that. That's just flying, the microphone's all flying around. And then Sonata just gets into the camera's face, picks it up, and one of, uh, you know, and takes it from the cameraman, you know, sends him flying, gives it to, uh, as far as gives it to Devitt. We'll let Devitt be the cameraman. Says that Naito made the worst mistake of his life. You see, with this, sure, the plan was tonight, Naito and me joining forces once again and being the new IWGB Everweight Champion, but you see, there's always a plan B. And I knew who just to call. If I needed backup, if I needed something done, 
that this man was the man for the job. His money can do powerful things. And I knew that if I gave him the Iggy on what was going to happen in his tag team matchup tonight with him and Tamora, that hey, you're going to either be on the wrong side of a chair shot or you can help me out if things go sideways. Graciously accepted. But now, now I'm looking at this group and we need a name. See, this is the order of change. We're changing this business. We're changing the way Japanese Pro Rest is being presented. Because we will destroy New Japan Pro Wrestling. Because the order will be the future of this business. It will be the future of Japanese Pro Rest. There's nothing this now appointed president can do. There's nothing that New Japan talent can do. This is ours for the taking. So there we go. We ended out still with Tyler Black as the heavyweight champion, but now a new wrinkle. Hobbs joining. And you're assuming the rest of the Dark Order is joining, and now they have this name. The Order of Change. Hobbs. Juice Robinson. Sonata. Jay White. Brody King. The Velocities. You have... Uh, you know, New Japan Strong Open Weight Champion now in Will Hobbs. The tag team champs of Jay White and Juice. U.S. champ, of course, Jay White. You have the, um, as far as Junior Boy Tag Team titles and the New Japan Strong Open Weight Tag Team titles with the Velocities. They got a lot of belts, but they still are missing that heavyweight title. They're still missing the Intercontinental title from John Moxley. Maybe even the women's title. You know, Famayu Watani. Never open weight. Six man tag team titles. And uh, even the never open weight title. Because, yeah, that is still. As far as. And that's the. Uh, this should have been flipped. <laughs> this this was the promo. And that was the beatdown. But it was in the wrong order. But that's alright. It works out in the end. So, what a. Uh, what a drama, Phil show for sure i mean this is what it was all about telling the story throughout the night you know as far as um trying to sack the deck against new japan it worked a lot of ways some ways it didn't you know some they still came on the losing end and in the in the end tyler black still beat sonata for the heavyweight title and retained a uh, fun match you know to have that i can't believe it went as well as it did with the turn, with the referee replacement, all that fun jazz. It was quite the jam-packed show. Uh, man, it's tough to really put over who... who nah, I guess Zach Tipper Jr. I know we put over Zach last time. Let's go with Falter. Why not? But a big program like that, you know, still 100,000 people tuning in. You love to see it. And now that's kind of a, a fun wrinkle. The Vossies kind of saying, hey, I, we didn't want to be in, in the Junior Heavyweight Tag League. The president was going to give us the tournament off, and whoever won would face us at Wrestle Kingdom. Well, assumingly that plan is, is going to be changed. You know, as far as with Naito in charge, and it looked like, man, I mean, it looked like it was going to be an LIJ addition to, to that order of change. At least now we know that that name is the order of change. Crazy. Crazy. Yeah, a lot, lot of, a lot of things happening. A lot of uh, turntables are being turned. Uh, oh yeah, Ray Phoenix. I was thinking, I was blanking on the Never Boy Champion. I don't know why. I was like, oh fucking yeah, Ray Phoenix. Which also again gives Hobbs a chance to get that belt back in a you know, rematch. So as far as that again, too, another enticing thing that was maybe granted for you know Sonata. It's like, hey man, I, you know, we got the president now. We can do whatever the fuck we want. But yeah, new tag team champs. And uh, new New Japan Strong Open Weight Tag Team Champions as well. That will do it, though, for this episode. It's funny, you know, Sonata's name was on the marquee, but he couldn't get the job done. But, my God, does he have a group on his hands that could lead to the destruction of New Japan 
We'll see if it in fact does, as we will catch you guys next time for Power Struggle. Take care, everyone.